Planeswalkers, Tyler here. And Andrew. And today on Taps for Two, we are very, very excited to introduce our first guest. Uh, Dave, why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, hello. Uh, I am uh, I am Dave. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I am a uh, commander player. That's pretty much all I play when it comes to Magic. Um, Fantastic. And I've been playing Magic for about four years. And I like talking about it, and I like writing about it. So um, I recently started writing uh, weekly articles for Cool Stuff Inc. about Commander. Uh, I write some stuff on my own as well that I publish. Uh, I self-publish on my Ko-Fi page, and I tweet a bunch of nonsense uh, on Twitter, and I do some very, very low-level Twitch streaming and things of that nature. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's me. And uh, thank you guys for uh, asking me to be here. This is exciting. Yeah, um, it Thanks was actually uh, it was actually one of your cool stuff. Inc. Uh, articles that kind of brought this all on because I found out uh, much like me and I I'm not Andrew how do you feel about like old mechanics because you've been playing for like the least least amount of time I don't know ones. a lot of them seem like they were discontinued for for good reason either they were just really bad or they were improved oh yeah upon. No. hold yeah. on to that Hold on to that line of text when I bring up the one I want to talk about. Okay, so but, uh, so I don't get to advocate for banding then. Is that is that not? No, you totally can. Thing? I'm gonna say no because banding <laughs> is the one I'm advocating for. <laughs> Excellent. But uh, yeah, it was actually your article on horsemanship. That horsey uh, man. It's I love it. I think it got unfairly treated. It is better flying. Yeah, it's uh, so uh, you mentioned it. I wrote my, my article. Was it this past week? It was the I don't remember. Time doesn't it was, matter. It was a couple. We, time yeah, doesn't matter quarantine, anymore. Quarantine. Time means nothing. It, time. Yeah, it's a flat circle. Um, <laughs> it's a social construct. I wrote about. I wrote about. Um, so part of the deal with Cool Stuff Inc. is they asked me to have a deck list in every article, and I initially was like, oh, I don't know, because I only have like four decks, and I don't build decks every week like a lot of people do. But um, it has forced me to kind of get creative. So. Um, I, I had in the past a deck with, uh, Sun Quan, Lord of Wu as my commander and Sun Quan is, uh, fondly referred to by me, uh, and probably me only as horsey man, just because I get a childlike delight out of saying horsey man, uh, with whimsy, uh, whenever I cast him or do something with him. So he's at, he's four blue, blue, uh, for a legendary creature and he, creatures I control have horsemanship. And I came across that card when I was looking to build a deck a while back, and I was like, "Horsemanship is a bonkers mechanic." That why what where where has this been all my life? I I need to do this because I was looking at it, and he's mono blue, right? And and you right. don't think of mono blue as the aggro color in any format, especially commander. Oh yeah. um, no, it's either like slow control or <laughs> right. thick fish, right? Flying <laughs> stuff, right? So it's like. Uh, I was like, this This seems interesting to me. So I built the deck. Um, this was probably two years ago now. Um, around, uh, basically the idea is, it was twofold. One was kind of Voltron, and the other was just kind of value. So the whole idea is that if everybody on my board has horsemanship, I can virtually guarantee that my opponents are not playing creatures with horsemanship. So they're not going to be able to be blocked. So my, so oh, yeah. my, no. my, my dudes I, uh... and dudettes are getting through. And oh, so yeah. I want to maximize that value. So creatures that draw me a card when they get through, or like like the swords, swords of fire and ice, feast and famine, that sort of thing that do right. things when they get through. Um, and it turned out to be um, a, uh, a a pretty interestingly powerful deck, uh, maybe more so than I thought. And I don't think it's not that I'm not going to be like you know arrogant enough to think that I like galaxy brain to see EDH deck out of nowhere, but. <laughs> Um, what it what it was is, is it kind of the concept was proven that that I, I, I my idea was wow can I do mono blue aggro with this weird ass mechanic and the answer was yes and I, and I had a lot of fun with it um, I very sadly um, when I made a career change uh, money became rather tight and so I sold off basically all my magic cards um, and so the horsey man deck uh, which was rather pricey fell apart uh, but just Rip it's horses. fun. Uh, right, uh, 
But it's funny that we're doing this today because just yesterday I put it back together in a uh, significantly depowered form, but um, got to put in some different cards, some less overtly powerful cards, um, and uh, get to see how it goes. But yeah, it was it was one of those things where I saw this mechanic in horsemanship that I'm like, what in the blue hell even is this? And I was so excited about it that because of that commander, I didn't need to go gather a bunch of cards with horsemanship, of which there are not many. I just needed no, him. I, yeah, because wasn't it only in... Portal like Three those, Kingdoms. It was only in Portal Three Kingdoms. Portal Three Kingdoms, which was not, um, which was not sold in the States. Um, it was, uh, it, well, not to any great degree. It was meant very very narrowly targeted at the Asian market, specifically the Chinese market, because Sun Quan, like a lot of the characters in the set, is an actual historical figure. Um, right, not I remember a... that being the uh, the big thing about Correct. that set. Is it's like, n- these, are, these are like historical fiction, but like real, real people. Correct. Yeah, not like, you know, Liliana and Nisso who are made up of whole cloth. Um, are you telling me re- Liliana's not real? <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. Um, I... We should Andrew, about- did you know this? Yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and you didn't well, tell me. I wanted to spare you. We'll have a talk about the Easter Bunny after the podcast, but... Um, right, Yargle's real, though, right? Like, the the demon frog, like, he exists. Yeah. Yeah? All right, totally. perfect. Yeah, all absolutely. Right, perfect. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't totally <laughs> destroy all your dreams. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you know, that, that, that mechanic was limited to, to Portal Three Kingdoms. There's one card, Lu Shun, Scholar General, that has been reprinted a number of times in Commander decks who has horsemanship. But that's it. Um, there's a handful of creatures in each color that have horsemanship and a handful of other permanents and things that, that play with horsemanship. But it's a very small list. And the ability to do essentially horsemanship tribal with only one two because Lushan is also blue two cars that actually have horsemanship was appealing to me um so i, I you know I, i'm a sucker for the road not taken especially in commander because it's a format that begs for it and uh i was excited to put it together i was even more excited when it worked and it was a fun deck um and it gave me uh, gave me a good reason to write a fun article about how um you know there's there's these mechanics that were kind of one-offs or two-offs um but Let's you know. Let's let let's maybe pull some of them out of the out, out of the archives and and see see what we can do with them. Because no, I yeah, I get it totally. Um, just because having that whole like history of magic like at your feet when you're brewing with commander, like you get the option of like choosing between a lot of really really cool things, and um yeah, like horsemanship that that that's one that like. I, I, I agree. I really wish they would have kept with it because it's not like inherently broken. It's not inherently bad. It's it's really not that hard to understand, which I know like no, that's it's, the it's, reason it's why like different... banding fell out because like to this day, who actually knows how banding works? Exactly. I, I sure no as one. Hell don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not it's not in any way busted mechanic. It's it's a, it's a it's a form of evasion. It's it's it, it it's is different. better flying, it, better or or yeah, it's, better flying or fear. Because, right, fear's another one. Menace is another one. Right, like yeah. we have these things that come back from time to time. Um, uh, just I mean, relatively recently, they brought back protection. Mm-hmm. And the hexproof from colors experiment. Um, and what was that? Was that M19 um, or Dominaria yeah. that had that had hexproof from from colors, something um, like that? And they've they've had it kind of over the last couple of sets because there was the oh god, what was the one that ended up having to like get banned because of it hated on blue and black? It was the green card. Uh, uh, Veil, once, of uh, Veil of Summer. Yeah, I think that one gave hexproof from blue uh, blue and black. Yeah, Veil of Summer. It was, it was that was that was no bueno for constructed formats. Oh yeah. Um, no. But I mean, that's kind of become a trend um, where uh, these things get into constructed formats, and it's like, oops, we can't believe we did this ourselves. Sorry, it's banned. Um, but yeah, they've shown a willingness to experiment with these different forms of uh, evasion. Um, and so why not bring back one that we already have? Let's, let's go to the horsey man plane. Let's, let's put everybody on horses and, and, and have a good time. That's, I mean, I think it's a modest proposal, but that's, it is a pretty interesting mechanic because it it is really just flying, but without the foil of, uh, um, reach. 
So you don't have two mm-hmm. different kinds of effects that can block it. It's just the one. So it's yeah. And, and reach too. I mean, keep in mind, reach. It, reach was not there from the beginning. Reach. Yeah, reach it was is, always. It was. Um, this creature can block as though it had flying. Right. Okay. Exactly. So reach is in the in the larger lifespan of magic, which is it's a twenty seven year old game at this point. Um, reach is fairly young compared to flying. Flying's been there since day one. It took ten or fifteen years before reach gave you that other way to deal with flyers. So, um, not to mention, and this is my favorite way to look at it because this is just part of my favorite thing about looking at cards and how they interact. It is way funnier. To imagine a creature with horsemanship versus a creature with flying. Because, like, 100%. auras that, like, can grant flying usually will show, like, you know, translucent wings. And you can imagine that. Right. Or it's just, like, hovering. Whereas, like, let's give horsemanship to Emrakul <laughs> and just sit back and imagine <laughs> what Bingo. this That's looks what I'm like. saying. That's right. Emrakul on a horse. Kozilek on a horse. Or Consecrated it, Sphinx on a horse. Why is this not us, hilarious to everybody? Like, it's hilarious to me. Because Emrakul doesn't and have I'm really legs. Simple. So if it makes me laugh, it should make everybody laugh. Because Emrakul doesn't have legs. She's got tentacles. So is it one horse underneath each tentacle? Or does she have just like I think it's little... a horse per tentacle. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a horse per tentacle. Um, she's got she's got like fifty horsepower. Yeah, <laughs> I see what you did there. Uh, I actually played around with horsemanship a bit myself, although because uh, Andrew and I, before we kind of really made the pivot into playing paper, we played a lot online, mostly through um, programs like Cockatrice, where you can mm-hmm. you know, build and play for free. And I wanted a deck that focused on. Things that were either incredibly difficult or almost impossible to block. And yeah. so my commander was, what's his name? He's the mono black with horse, uh, Zhao Dun, the one eyed. Yeah. Yeah. He was my commander. And there's a lot of black creatures from Portal Three Kingdoms that have horsemanship. So I threw them in there. I threw shadow in there. I, sh- I threw fear in there. And I just called it, you know, uh, hard to block tribal. <laughs> And to me, that's that's kind of what um, it's kind of what Commander's all about, right? Like that's one of the. I mean, I love Commander for a lot of reasons, but that's that's the one I love maybe the most. Is that um, you know I've heard it described this way fairly often. Um, Commander is meant to be a format where cards get played and get played together that were never meant to do that, um, and, and I think that that's. That there's there's so much room for experimentation and so much room to just throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks and dig out a card that no one's thought about in 15 years and make something of it. And Commander lets us do that. And that was one of the reasons I really enjoyed and, that, and why that horsemanship deck is very personal to me because... You know, I wasn't trying to go take down, you know, a competitive EDH pod. That's not what that's about. I would get slaughtered in CEDH with that deck. I'm going um, into vintage with my horsey man deck. Let's roll. <laughs> exactly, right? Like, like, it's not like that for me. You know, for me, part of the appeal of Commander is doing that offbeat stuff. You know, that's why I have a deck, um, a mono white Daxos blessed by the sun deck that is hot Daxos because I think that Daxos is hot. That's the whole reason for the deck. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not no, some... we, we had talked about that on Twitter where you had mentioned Cold Daxos. Cold Daxos. Like... Daxos the Returned is, is Cold Daxos because he's dead. Daxos, um, the, the first one, the, 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 the white blue one. Daxos and is, That one is Warm Daxos because he was alive. And then Blessed by the Sun is Hot Daxos because he's a dreamboat. So um... <laughs> that was not the answer I had been expecting when I went and commented underneath with, so cold Daxos, huh? And you're like, yeah, you know, because he's dead. And I was like, all right, cool. So does that make Blessed by the Sun hot Daxos, you know, because he was touched by the sun. And then I wasn't expecting, yeah, no, that's just because he's a dreamboat. And I was like, you know what? Fair. <laughs> it's it's really, it's, uh, I'm not a difficult man to understand. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but I mean, again, there's no greater meaning there. It wasn't like this is going to be an experiment in life gain and blah, blah, blah. I wanted to make the deck because I thought the commander was attractive. And Commander lets you do that. You can build decks for any number of reasons. Play Andrew, them is that why you built the Locust reasons. God? 
no. <laughs> it's a giant bug. <laughs> not, uh, not judging at all. He's seeing a Maybe giant, a little, but... A giant monstrous locust. I, I play it because it's fun eyes. and it... it <laughs> It has dead eyes. You don't know what he was Have like you before seen he its was face? Hey, dead is a kind. <laughs> you know what? You got me there. I mean, I'm rolling through like the 16 commander decks that I have and trying to find one that fits that mold. But like most of my commander. Oh, no, I've got Rakdos. That's just Rakdos. It's Rakdos tribal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Rakdos tribal. Yeah. I love that. I love stuff like that. I love that. I just, I, 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 that's what I love this for. That's why I love this format. Yeah, no, Make I, like a blue Super Friends deck that's every Jace. Mm-hmm. Oh god, can... I can feel the pretension <laughs> from over here. <laughs> <laughs> the arrogant child. Ooh. Which that's still my favorite. My favorite thing. If you go to the official Magic Wiki, uh, uh and you go to the page about Obnixilis, and it talks about his time trapped on Zendikar. Uh, there's a hyperlink at a point where it mentions that when he got stuck there, he would meet every planeswalker that showed up and see if he could trick one into removing the hedron from his forehead. And there's a hyperlink where it mentions that eventually some arrogant child took the bait. And if you click the hyperlink for some arrogant child, it brings you to Jace's page. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> It's the best. That is funny, but uh, I, we could we could go we could do a whole hour on Jace and and but uh, oh yeah I'll, we hey, hey future episodes. Um, Andrew, <laughs> you were the your mechanic is one I was also super interested in hearing about because the mechanic you had picked is literally the reason behind the name <laughs> for the scale of are we going to see this mechanic or not? Like the likelihood. I, I just like. I just like the idea of Storm. I, I'm not great at yeah, debating, that so I don't have a, I don't have that convincing of a, an argument other than it. I think it's fun. Um, Has Storm ever really been it, viable in Commander? Because it'd be kind of cool to. I like, don't know because there's Thousand Year Storm that we just got recently. Right, that was in a uh, Modern Horizons. No, um, no. Uh, Guilds of Ravnica. Was it was it, was it, it was guilds? Yeah. yeah, it was guilds. Guilds or I think it was guilds. Yeah, it had the. It was I, the, one with the, reason, the thing about huh. storm and, and I, I, you know, it's funny because the storm scale is a thing. Um, yeah. I, I I think it's fairly safe to say storm is never coming back in its purest form to constructed to standard sets. Um, but your question is it viable in commander? It depends on the kind of commander you're playing. Um, I imagine in a more competitive environment, it's very viable because you you have a lot of um, you'll have a lot of uh, turns where people are playing multiple spells and there are counters and counters to counters and things like that. Right. Um, in a more quote unquote casual game where me people are casting one, maybe two, maybe three spells per turn, eh, it's not that great. Um, yeah, I, I would accept it being in, like, a Commander Precon or a side set or something. It doesn't have to be a standard set. Okay, so... But I, I just like the idea of Storm. Commander 2021 theme old mechanics. We've got the Horsemanship deck, we've got the Banding deck, and then we've got the Storm deck, and people wonder if Wizards have finally lost their minds. I'm pretty sure the Storm deck... Mm, I don't know. Would that be... Maybe the Horsemanship deck would be the strongest out of those three. It'd be, I mean, uh, on paper, maybe, but if you know how to play Storm... See, that's the thing. I am, uh, and I have no problem with any of this, I am not bright enough to play Storm effectively. You gotta do math, you gotta keep track of numbers, you gotta, like, there's there, there's a lot going on there. And oh, I yeah. just, I I just wanna, I just wanna, I, I just wanna, like, make let Horsey me, go boom boom. Let, and, and that's, let me cast that's my like, big dumb idiot son. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's as far, as, that's as deep as I get. Um... You know, it's 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 funny you mentioned Storm because I think that is that's sort of emblematic of uh, uh, that is a mechanic that it's a lot like Infect in that when you mention it in the context of Magic and specifically Commander, people are gonna like sort of instinctively recoil, like ugh. Yeah, Infect, no, I, ugh, I, Storm. I'll, I'll admit I'm the monster <laughs> with I have a Demir Infect Commander deck. 
I don't there play is, it too often, I, but I will. I will eventually build a Skitherix infect deck. That's happening. I, I have I, I have decks that have infect as part of them. I don't. I would say that I don't think I have an infect deck, but um, look, anyone will tell you that despite the fact that infect makes everybody turn their nose up, like. Infect isn't like taking down a whole bunch of games. Like it's not. It's not a. Infect isn't an auto win. It's not instantly more powerful. Um, it can be stopped like any other deck. Right. Um, and I think that's true of almost anything. I think what what we see when it relates to mechanics, old, new, um, and evergreen alike, is that we have sort of emotional entanglements with them. We have the ones that we like, right? Like I, I have an attachment to horsemanship, so I'm never going to talk bad about it. Um, We have the ones that we don't, I, I, you know, and, and there are reasons for that. Sometimes there's no reason for that. Um, But you know, this, we are human beings playing. I feel like a companion is recently being thrown into that fire of people either like latching onto it or like, get this out of here all because of that (laughs) stupid stupid otter well i mean the the otter (laughs) look the thing the thing and i've been i I, i've been i've been beating this drum since the announcement it is very clear when you watch that reveal and when you read the material very very clear that that make that 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 card in particular but they make it excuse me, the mechanic more broadly, was not meant for Commander. Yeah, no, it was especially not... with, um, as of, as of today, uh, we saw the, because it looks like there's going to be 10 of them, each in, each one in one of the dual colors, because we just saw the Orzov one today. Who Correct. Even uh, Shivan was like, if there's any indication that this mechanic was not made for commander it's the fact that the orzov's deck uh building restriction is all of your stuff has to be cmc two or less right, <laughs> right. And, that, and and i think that's an important thing to understand is that part and parcel of of playing in a format in which virtually every card ever printed in this game is available to you is that not every card is meant to be part of this format. And that can go several directions. Like we talked about earlier, sometimes it's rediscovering an old card and saying, wow, this can be really cool, like like Sun Quan and horsemanship cards. The other end of it, though, is is like this, is, is the companion and Lutri in specific. This card was decidedly not meant for this format, and that's why... It was banned out of the box. That's and here's another part that people keep missing. Wizards preemptively banned it for brawl, also. Okay, so this yeah, I was hearing, I was hearing about that. He's he is here for very, standard and like he's here he, for sixty it is card, there for not bingo. singleton, and is and is and and they never intended it to have any place in any other format, and that's gonna happen. When there are this many cards and we're getting hundreds, if not thousands of new ones every year, there are going to be some that don't fit. And that's where we as players and the rules committee, when it gets to that level, have to make decisions about, well, does it not fit just because it hasn't found a place or does it not fit because it doesn't belong here and shouldn't be here? Um, and I think that that the companion is is one of the rare exceptions to the rule, and if I were to say there is a rule, in my opinion, it's that just about anything goes. You just got to find a way to make it work. Right. Um, now, that's, that's you know, I, I would really challenge somebody to make a good banding deck in Commander. Um, just ah, because good. I've been summoned now. So. It's, it is your turn. <laughs> so the reason that banding had come up for me is because uh, Andrew and I had... I mean, it it was, it's a while ago and it was before the whole lockdown and quarantine stuff. We finally got to sit down and uh, Winston drafts some mystery boosters, you mm-hmm. know, good old misty boosties. Mm. Um, I, boosties. I don't like saying it out loud. Anyway. <laughs> oh, get, oh, no, 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 no. If, if I'm going to be here for the duration of this podcast, it is boosties and only boosties. Okay. I don't want to hear the word booster <laughs> again. Okay. So we sat That's down my one and, ask. and we drafted some boosties. And there we go. <laughs> we ended up with a sliver hive lord 
that uh, oh my. that I ended up I ended up with. Uh, Andrew pulled it, but I ended up trading him for it because World Gorder Dragon inexplicably is like fifteen dollars now. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and of course, when you have one of the legendary slivers, there is only one direction you can go with it, and that is you go slivers. Right. And while going through Gatherer to try and you know pick out which slivers I wanted, I came across the um. It was from the convention version of the Misty Boosties, the uh, the playtest cards where there's the bandit yep. sliver, and I sat yep. there and yep. I stared at it and I was like, "Do I do I do it?" <laughs> That's a real thing. Yeah, banding it is sliver. An actual it, thing. It, oh, it's not a yes. legitimate. It's technically not a legal card. It's one of the playtest cards. Uh, but that being said, I have two. But silver... they did consider. Yeah, I have two silver border decks. So it was on the table. Would... I'm still debating if I should get it and put it in. And that's just because I think banding is hilariously wacky to the point where there's the cycle of lands. I want to say they're from homelands because that sounds right. That um, I don't think they tap for mana, but they give banding to legends of certain colors. Or they, you know, they have one for each color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have an Arvad the Cursed. EDH deck that is all Orzhov legendaries and it cares about legendary mm-hmm. creatures and that is it. And I want mm-hmm. to get a copy of the black and the white banding lands for in there uh, to start introducing banding to to the deck uh, just because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> like, And again, that's I, I am all I am here for that. It, it, if I can have a hot guy deck, you can have a silly banding deck. That's Commander. That's Commander in its purest, truest form. And, and Andrew can have his sexy in insect that he doesn't want to admit. Hey. <laughs> hey. Just, poor just Andrew. You keep throwing me under the bus there. Poor no. Andrew. <laughs> no, this is, this is definitely the format to just do silly things and make things work. And you can make just about anything work. It's uh, great, and that, that's and, and, you took that Valduk deck that I gave you that I thought would never really be <laughs> anything amazing, and you turned that thing into something terrifying. <laughs> it's it's weaker now because I've kind of cannibalized it for the uh, Sir Gwyn oh. deck, but yeah, the the Valduk Voltron deck just make an army of elementals and Valduk yeah, never, has especially to like fire <laughs> with like fires of invention. You just play cards for free, have all your mana open, equip. It's it's fun and it's silly, and I love it. And that's the thing. I, I, I you know, I, I am an, an unapologetic evangelist for the uh for the for the social and the fun part of Commander. I, I look, I am not a CEDH player. I have zero problem with CEDH players. If you guys know um uh the spike feeders, um I am a huge fan of theirs. I, yeah, I do I see you're on a lot on, of their stuff. I've been on their stuff. Jim came on and opened my boosties with me um when I did my boosty stream. Um I I have nothing but respect for the way they play the game. Um, that is a sentiment that I know is shared by the rules committee and the CAG. Um, you know, there's this perception I think that that CEDH or competitive players are the 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 the, the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking they're for? Like, that they are like the they're well that they're that they're the outliers and they're they're the unwanted and they're like the they're they're like the the, like, the annoying little brothers that nobody wants around fun format and you're ruining this it? format right exactly that's <laughs> crap okay this format is and sheldon menory someone else i've had the pleasure of getting to know a little bit sheldon menory has said i don't know how many times that he supports cedh he supports um CEDH players, uh, you know, there is no, there is no actual division among the player base that is all perceived and invented because the, at the end of the day, commander is what you want it to be. And for some people that is competitive and that is absolutely, yeah, no, totally cool. That It, it doesn't have and, to and be the, for you so long as you're not ruining it for like other people, like it's definitely something that I feel like, you know, before you sit down with like a new pod or you sit down with people that want to try other decks, kind of, you know, see what level everyone wants to be at. Cause, a thousand percent. Because if you're going to take Horsey Man down to a CEDH pod. 
I'm in trouble. I'm going <laughs> to have a bad time. Someone's not going to have yes. fun. <laughs> right. Well, and here's the thing about that too. And I know this from talking with, with more competitive players. They are, if in that scenario, right? Like I take a very casual deck to a CEDH table. They are just as likely to have a bad time as I am. Because neither of us are having our expectations for a fun game met. And that's what it's about. There's been a lot of discussion um, in the past few months about how do we quantify power levels and numbers and things like that. I am not a fan of numbered systems. I don't think they work. Um, I was at MTG Reno where Channel Fireball tried out their... Excuse, <clears throat> excuse me. Their new numbering system. Yeah, I saw. All I don't the, uh, think tweets about it. It wasn't bad. I don't think it was a disaster, but I certainly don't think it was a smashing success either. I think any numbered system is going to have fatal flaws. For me, when I'm sitting down to play, so if I was sitting down to play with with the two of you and a fourth player, and none of us had ever played together before, the the conversation I would want to have is, okay, how, what is everybody trying to get out of this? You know, are you trying to win at all? If you're trying to win, how quickly are you trying to win? Are you trying to win on turn three? Or are you trying to win on turn eight, nine, ten? Um, how do you win? You know, are, do you win by making it so I can't play? Right? Um, do you win by, um, or do you or do you turn the game into a stalemate by making it so no one can play? Which I've had happen to me. Um, that's what's, the, what's I mean, that I think. one it, enchantment that ends a game in a draw in two turns? Um, oh yeah, I know which one you're talking. I I just saw it the other day. I can't remember the name. Um, it's white. Yeah, and it's, it's old and it's weird. It's angelic, uh, divine? No, it's not divine. Something is it? It might. Um, it might be. Something. Yeah, that might be it. Um, but that that I think is the key t- to Commander is is it's not as much about being able to point to a number on it, it on a scale and say well. Divine intervention. I thought it that is, did yeah. sound right. It's not about being able to point at a number and say, I'm a six, you're an eight, we're a four, whatever. It's about a shared experience. And the conversations that we have need to revolve around that. So so for me, I'm not going to sit down to play. If I'm going to play with Jim and the Spike Feeders, I'm going to play when they're playing their casual decks, not when they're playing their Flash Hulk and, oh, and that kind of Hulk. stuff. Good old Flash Hulk. Um, I'm not going to play in that world because I don't, that's not how I'm going to have fun. And they're not going to have fun playing with me in that world. If I'm going to play with, with anybody, it's going to be where we all have an understanding and what's, and so I can bring my, my horsey man deck that I just, just makes me giggle, or you can bring your banding deck or, um, you know, people can bring their, uh, uh, uh people I I've seen some like people looking over their shoulder tribal, um, is something somebody wants to build. Yeah, like, where all me. of the creatures are... Oh, yeah, it was you. I, was, I knew I saw that somewhere. <laughs> that was me. That was all of them are... Yes, and I think that's... I, tribal. <laughs> I want to see that deck. I think that's hilarious. And that's and so we can bring those kinds right of now. decks. <laughs> we can bring those kinds of decks to a table together and have a good time. And someone else can bring their highly tuned competitive deck to a table with other highly tuned competitive decks and have a good time. It's all about just doing, it's all about, Commander is all about a shared experience where everybody ends up walking away happy. Exactly. And that's not necessarily about winning. And that's where, that's why I like talking about things like old mechanics and silly mechanics like horsemanship and banning because there's room for that in Commander. I believe that. That's what Commander's about. There's no room for that in Modern or Legacy or Vintage or Standard. There's room for it in Commander. This is where we get to play like kids and yeah, and that's I, I think that's the best way i've ever heard it put well i'm i'm, I'm glad that i was able to see, look it's a monday and we're in the we're in the nether realm of time right now so i'm glad i was able to form a coherent thought uh, <laughs> no because like even even between realm. andrew and i because we we predominantly play 1v1 he and i actually we we work at the same day job that's how the two of us met and so we Andrew and I see each other in well we don't see each other in person a lot recently uh, outside of work thank you right uh but we play a lot of 1v1 and it's like we have vastly different play styles but it's still funny seeing those go up against each other because like I I am battle cruiser magic all the way let me cast my big dumb creatures mm-hmm. uh I'm sure Andrew right now is having PTSD flashbacks of a whale and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, which one? I like to go uh, wide. Colossal whale. Ah, yes. 
That was your deep sea oh, deck, yeah. wasn't it? But then I, I just yeah. I just played a game the other night against a big dumb sea creature tribal deck, and it was big dumb sea creatures, and it was and that's fun. Like I wouldn't play that deck, but I I could tell that the the, the player had fun, and I had fun playing with it. Then, that's uh, that... Andrew and I had this one game, and Andrew, as soon as I mention one specific card, you're gonna know exactly what game I'm talking about. Uh, my Rakdos deck runs oh, I, I he already knows what I i'm talking about it runs the combo of what is it demonic pact is that the one that it's got the four options but the last option is lose the game and then, and harmless, then harmless offering, offering. Or something like that. yes and so i always wanted to do that uh my and i was running so omnath yeah, he's, locus so he's of the running a uh, new omnath and uh mm-hmm. i i cast uh demonic pact and, you know, usually the idea is you you use the three good ones and then you give it to your opponent. Right. Uh, my hubris got the better of me. And so I used the <laughs> first good one and then I gave it to Andrew because I was like, there's no way he's actually going to be able to beat me. Uh, Andrew, you want you want to talk about the absolute shenanigans you managed to pull out of that? <laughs> Yeah, it was something something along the lines of I had I have a bunch of uh, cloning effects. I had some risen a risen reef that I cloned, so I was getting value out of that. I ended up uh, what is it? Avenger of yeah, Zendikar that, that makes, makes all the, the plant tokens. Yeah, I I played him, and I think it's Landfall that puts the the counters on all the plant tokens. I just went super wide and then played a. Uh, Teamer ascendancy. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, he, just, he builds up this so. board, and at this point, it's like because, uh, like I think two turns had gone by, and so I passed it back to him. No, I passed it to him for the second turn that he has the demonic pact, and I'm like, all right, I've got like three giant demons on the board. You have like a couple little dirtily one ones. If you do not kill me this turn, and I'm at like 38 life. If you do not kill me this turn, I'm going to, when you pass the turn, I'm going to draw, and I'm going to pass back to you, and you're going to lose immediately. So, see if you can do it. And I was pretty sure he couldn't. He then promptly hit me for 70. <laughs> <laughs> I, dropped like, I dropped like 20, 23 plants, gave, made them all like three uh, fours, they were, and they were all two threes. Gave them all and haste. I was like, okay, well, at well, least they threes. don't have haste, so he can't. Because he had like eight of them. And I was like, well, at least he can't <laughs> attack with them. No, it was it was like 20. Cause oh, you're I right. Because it was uh, create one for every land that you control. So I had a lot of them. He had like in, 20 in of these like that. two threes, and I was like, all right, it's fine. They don't have haste. <laughs> he can't swing. Yeah, team or yep. ascendancy? I'm sorry. <laughs> commander uh, so yeah no i go i go tall he goes so wide good. and it's really funny to watch those two kind of decks hit each other well and and so and that's and that's the great thing is is i um i i re went, after i had to sell off all my cards i i was able to build a deck so i could play magic again and the first deck i built um was a riku of two reflections deck and mostly, be, no, really, uh, the reason was I'd always been intrigued by the card. Um, and I just never had wrapped my head around it enough to be able to put a deck together so that I, I took that challenge on. And what it ended up being was, was I would I would guess, I would estimate probably 70% cloning and 30% spell slinging. And basically, it when it tries to play your deck better than you do um I, oh, I, but I it also this is our deck <laughs> right that because i think that i think that's funny as hell had, just like oh your deck's awesome i'm gonna play I it too. Deck in, um in standard uh it was pre-rotation so it was when ixalan and all that was still in and i only play standard on arena now just because I'm not going to shell out hundreds of dollars for a standard deck. I'll, I'll shell out that money for a commander deck because it won't rotate. But no, I had built right. an Esper Pirates. Yeah, Esper Pirates. And it was all about take stuff from your opponent's hand, take stuff from their deck, and take stuff from the field. And then you played it. So I called it yep. It's Our Deck. It was mm-hmm. so much fun. <laughs> That's good. and I And I wish I had thought of it. Um, 
But but in that deck, so there's a lot of like there's second harvest and clone legion and that sort of thing, right? Spark you know spark double and stunt oh, double and God, things like Andrew that. Loves but spark I double. also spark double such a good it's, I um I actually did Mirror, I won a Mirror game Mark. with that deck because I made between Brudaclad and Spark Double I made uh 23 Niv Mizzets. <laughs> well, that beats my four nickel bullish dragon gods. Uh, and uh, th- I-, I won when I was at like 15 life and one of my opponents was like 140 um, because I-, I-, I had 23 Niv Mizzets, drew one card, <laughs> and lasers they all, focused. it just, yep, just, just like a <laughs> pew, 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 target pew. locked. Yeah. So, um, but I included in the deck a, a safety valve. For if the game needs to end, or if I'm about to lose, so I need to win, um, it's uh, Biovisionary. So Biovisionary, if you're not familiar, oh it's yeah, a, he's, it's uh, a, I bl- you. He's the one that if you control four copies of him, you win, right? Correct. At the if at your end step, you have four copies, four cards named Biovisionary on your battlefield, you win the game. So in my deck, there are many ways to get there. Um, Brudaclad is one. Where, uh, so like I can cast the, so the thing about Biovisionary is I only, I, I want, like you talked about the hubris with the demonic pack before the very first time I tried it, I cast the Biovisionary by itself before I could complete the, the set of four and that did not work out well for me. So now I will wait until I have all the pieces and then I will do it and then I will win the game. So I can cast the Biovisionary, copy it with Riku. That gets me a token. Then if Brudaclad is out, he makes a token, and then I can turn every token into the same thing. I pick Biovisionary, go to end step, I win the game. So the the first time I did that, it was like, oh my god, that's so funny. Like, I haven't thought about this card in 10 years. That's so great. Nice job. The fifth time I did it, everyone's like, I'm <laughs> not going to play that. I'm not going to play against that deck anymore. <laughs> so... Oh, that lost this is all by way of... real quick. Yeah, sometimes the luster does wear off. Um, but I mean, again, that's that's an example of, you know, Biovisionary is a niche card from, I think it was original Ravnica um, or Return to Ravnica, one of those blocks that um, people, you know, every, you know, even to this day, I'll bring out the Riku deck with, with new people and they're like, what is that card? I'm like, uh, it's the end of the game. <laughs> Um, but that's what it is. Uh, but th- th- that's that's where we get to do these things, right? Like again, no one's playing a biovisionary deck in Legacy. No one's playing a biovisionary deck in in, in Vintage or, or Modern. Like you're doing it in Commander, and 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 you know, there's all these weird achievement unlocked things we can do. Like give somebody a demonic pack with harmless offerings so they lose the game is a great one. Um, you know, how many, how many players have played a mill deck and milled themselves out first by accident? I think it's happened to everybody who's played a mill deck. It's just, it's, it's just yeah, like, it, it's, it's part definitely of definitely the- one of those things that if you don't know, it's, it's kind of like, it's the blue equivalent of playing suicide black without having any idea of what it is that you're doing. Cause at that point it just becomes right. suicide. Right. And, 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 and. <laughs> You know, that's that's the thing about Commander. And, and when we talk about old or underappreciated uh, mechanics, that's 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 what makes this format so special for me, is that Commander is the place to build a horsemanship deck or a banding deck in the year of our Lord 2020. I, or, I got my you know, own moment like that the other day when uh, they had, because they were like in the process of spoiling for Commander 20, the partner commanders that are in each deck and yeah. the jeskai partners are the uh the mono red woman that rides a shark and her azorius yes. flying shark and i looked at it and i was yes. like she gives sharks trample i can finally mm-hmm. play giant shark in commander because god that card is terrible but i have a copy of right. it right right because God, I've I've actually got it up here. It's, it's... What's it? If giant shark, so five and a blue, four four. So I mean, terrible. Yeah. Uh, if giant shark blocks or is blocked by a creature that has taken damage this turn, giant shark gains plus two plus zero oh, and trample until end of turn. He cannot attack unless an opponent controls at least one island, and he 
he dies if you control no islands. If you're in blue and you're not controlling islands, you're doing something wrong. Uh, yes. But, uh, I, like, I love the flavor of him, like, of that whole, like, feeding frenzy for sharks. Like, this thing's been hurt. Yeah. There's blood in the water. He's bigger, and now he's got trample. But what's her name? Exactly. Can give him trample without that needing to happen. So now he's just a 4 4 trampler Correct. for six. It's and that's and that's why you know there are a lot of people who and I get the that there's a lot of I don't know about a lot I've seen a fair amount of negative negative reaction on Twitter to uh, Aquaria and C twenty flavor wise just because um, there's there are there's a subset of players who feels as though this is going a little too it's far. It's the Godzilla cards, um, isn't it? That is part of it. Um, but even the whole, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't want to say their arguments are valid because it's absolutely not. People are allowed to feel how they feel about things like flavor. Right. Um, I just think we're playing a game called Magic the Gathering and we don't bat an eye at things like Tarmogoyf and Yargle. I, I don't really see <laughs> where, I don't see how a shark with eagle wings is where we draw the line. But I mean, who um, remembers the first artwork? For, I think the card is just called Flight, where it's just a zebra. Just It doesn't even have wings. It's just like... It's just a zebra yeah. in the air. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is a game where 13 squirrels can kill Emrakul. Okay? So let's, let's, let's keep our perspective. So that's why I'm like, I, this doesn't do anything to me as far as that. Um, but yeah, how awesome is it now that if you want to do a Sharknado deck... Oh, I lost my mind do it. when that card was spoiled. Oh, right? I, the things like, I texted I rolled my, my eyes girl, really hard. The things but... I texted my girlfriend. I was like, listen, I love <laughs> you, but I am in lust with this card. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I feel... A... It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it works out for him. <laughs> I feel about Shark Typhoon, how Andrew secretly feels about the Locust God. Anyway. <laughs> that That's just going to be a bit it's now. Super. Yep. Yeah, sorry. You got a meme, buddy. A thing. <laughs> yep. But now, uh, this this set is uh, quite literally jumping the shark, and I love it. I think I it's was, great. According to the Aquaria wiki page, we are getting our first standard legal brushwag since brushwag was printed, and I cannot wait. It hasn't been spoiled yet, That's but what we're I'm getting saying. a brush like, wagon. We're getting another squirrel. We're get we we got we got we got cat nightmares, and we got. Tell me it's a kaiju squirrel, please. I mean, we did just get the I want, uh, I want loading it. ready run. Just revealed the badger dinosaur. Yeah, that was a good one. Badger dinosaur. It, it is. It's See, red awesome. bone miser. It, it, it's 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 this is a you know it, magic in general but and and commander as a subset look this is a game and and, and i and i feel as though in, in 2020 where where we everything is a twitter fight and everything is a think piece i think we we very easily lose sight of the fact that this is a game about wizards and dragons and and things like that and that we're it's supposed to be fun and and sort of fantastical and whimsical right yeah. and so i choose to lean into that that's why that's why i can write 1500 words and i actually could have gone probably 3 or 4000 if i really wanted to about horsemanship <laughs> um that's that's why i can do uh you know hot daxos that's because this is this is a game and it's supposed to be fun and 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 what are we doing if not having fun and if it gets to a point where you're not able to have fun playing a game, then you should. I I don't know what to tell yeah. you other than maybe it's time for you to not play the game. But for me, this is why I lean more toward command. I'm I'm a competitive guy, right? Like, what if I do something I want to win? Like, I'd be lying if I didn't hope I won every game I played. But if I wanted to, if I wanted to play winning magic, I'd play a different format. I'd play modern. I'd play legacy. I'd play standard, and I would do the meta and all that stuff. I don't care. I want to. If I'm going to sit down at a table for an hour or two hours, I want to have fun. I want to. Oh laugh. yeah, no. It, I want silly, if I dumb lose, things to happen. I but want I lose twenty three Niv Mizzets. Yeah, no, if and, I lose and, to twenty three Niv Mizzets, I will <laughs> shake your hand. Like if absolutely. I'm lose, but, let me lose spectacularly. Hundred percent. 
Hundred percent. That's that to me. That's why we play let, this game. Let me and lose specifically to the why army we play house plants, where I was a hundred percent certain he wasn't coming back. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. That's the it, thing. Is like we 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 ultimately what you the best thing you can get out of a game of Commander is a good story and a good memory, and I and I believe that in the core of my soul that that is really that is that is the beating heart of this format is that. It is meant to be a place for people to come together and share a positive experience. And so why not get a little silly? Why not make a banding deck? Because, yeah, there are going to be, you know, super serious people who are like, screw it. Like, make the deck you want to make. Like, you know, if you if you want to do, you know, I, I don't, how many squirrel decks are there? I, you know, uh, uh, you one know, more in the world. You do once crab I tribal. I, crab tribal is another thing I'm working on. Crabs, frogs, right. turtles. I've been trying to make hippos Surf and turf, work. man. Like, 100%. Do it. Like, that's what, that's, that's what this game is about. And, that's, and, I, and is- it shocks me how frequently we lose sight of that. This game is just supposed to be fun, and it's, for some people, being competitive is fun, and for other people, being silly is fun, and I feel like they can both coexist. That's just, And that is and that is the logical fallacy that I keep trying to destroy, is that it, it is not mutually exclusive for this to be a format where people can be competitive and people can have fun. Because, yes, there are people who have fun being competitive. The, the only, the only type of... The only bad player, and by bad I mean like it's the guy with the banding uh, deck. Anyway, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, the only bad player is the one who pub stomps and who intentionally misrepresents their deck so that they can trick the table into losing. That has no place in this format. And that is that is the only way, in my opinion, to play that is dishonorable in any way. Um, everything else, there's a place for it. The trick is just finding your people that are gonna that are you're all gonna be able to have that positive experience. But um, you know, it, it, it's a place where a guy like me can look at horsemanship and giggle and go horsey man he and make a deck. And have a good time with it. And it's a place where you can look at banding and say, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to give it a shot. Or crabs or squirrels or whatever. Do it. Or uh, like it's, it's, <laughs> Andrew it, can make an army of houseplants. No bl- there's no other place. Army of houseplants. There's no other place to do it. Looking over your shoulder tribal. There's no other place to do this stuff. And, 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 and it, we're, we're cheating ourselves if we're not taking full advantage of the immense amount of freedom and individuality that we get to incorporate into this format. Nah, I agree a hundred percent. Um, Andrew, was there anything you wanted to add in? I think we're coming up on time here. No, that sounds pretty good. Those are very well said. Uh, Dave, do you have any final words? Um, I mean, look I, again, thanks. Thanks for asking me. And thanks for having me on this. I, I had a blast. This is a fun topic. You're, you're fun guys. Um, I think, look, you know, I think a lot of what we've covered um, in this episode uh, really kind of some summarizes how I feel and how I know a lot of uh, a lot of commander players feel that that this this is a place where we get to be ourselves. And I, I don't think anybody should ever be made to feel like they are wrong for doing something that isn't the most optimal or oh well you should be running why aren't you running that card in that deck it needs to be there don't mind tell me what what i need to do like uh, i handcrafted uh, this deck everything is here because i wanted it to be here and and the stuff that's (laughs) not there is there for a reason it's either i don't want it there or i can't afford it and there those are both valid reasons right um um like you know, my mono my mono black zombie deck. I have uh Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth, but tragically, uh no cabal coffers. Right. Yeah, great example, right? Like you know, how many green players would love a guy as cradle? Uh all right? of them. Like we can't <laughs> Exactly. And we can't we, we can't all have one, unfortunately. So we, we we you know, our our decks 
our play styles, the games that we, cause here's the thing about commander. And, and if, and if, and if people listening, take nothing away from this, you know, I, I try to preach this message as much as I can. Commander, we, we sit down. Yes, we're playing a game, but what we are doing is we are working together to craft an experience. And that, you know, some of the, my most fond memories with my friends are the experiences that we crafted playing commander because we get the opportunity to do that now is every game going to be memorable and have a big story attached no some games are just games right but every once in a while every once in a while you shoot someone really down really 23 nib misses 100 <laughs> percent, or, or or 70 power worth of plants right like this this is stuff that happens and commander was created by players for players as a way for people to come together and have a good time playing this game. It is still that. And until and unless it stops being that, I encourage everybody to kind of get on the same page just in the sense that we all belong here. We all have a place here. And this experience, this format, these decks are what we make them and what we want them to be. And so that's why I will happily go anywhere and everywhere and talk about horsemanship um, or shirtless demigods and, and, and what have you, because that's what commander is about. And you heard I, it here I, first. You know, commander Commander's has become shirtless demigods. TM <laughs> copyright that, um, <laughs> You know, this is this is the year of Commander, and and Commander has become the most popular format in the game. And I truly believe that the fact that it is such an individual expression of each player's style and values and traits and attributes um, is a big part of that. And I, I I urge everybody who plays this format or who um, is thinking about playing this format to remember first. That regardless of the power level you're playing at, regardless of how you like to enjoy the game, the purpose is to have an enjoyable time. Not just for you, but for the people you're playing with. And if everybody can be on that same page, this format will stay healthy and fun and viable for years and years and years to come. So um, we can sit here and debate whether new cards are too powerful or this or that and the other thing and bans and unbans and rules and things like that. At the end of the day, we are the ones who make this format what it is. Either we sustain it or we let it die. And I don't have any desire to let this format die. So um, I hope everybody uh, is enjoying the new cards. Oh, I'm um, losing my <clears throat> mind. This set I, it was like handcrafted for me. like, And a lot of people feel that way. And, I, and I'm so excited for that. Now, I will say, for me, I don't have a personal, like, fandom affinity for oh, Kaiju. I've, but I know I've a great many Godzilla people who do. Like, so there you go. It would be just like if they made a set that was, like, loosely based on Power Rangers. I'd lose my <laughs> mind. Right? Like, if it was Magic's... If it was the Angel Grove plane, I would... I'd be apoplectic. I'd be in a coma from excitement. <laughs> like... <laughs> And that's and that's the thing. I hope. I mean, again, it's a game, and it's supposed to be fun, and we're supposed to have that childlike delight and that wonder at stuff. Enjoy it. All right. Yeah. Maybe that new blue card that's free when you control your commander is powerful. Sure, there are powerful cards all the time. The, the uh, just play the game the way that you have fun playing it, and the format will take care of itself. That's 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 my parting message. It, it's just it's easy for us to to get into these hot take debates and and existential crises about commander. It's really not that big a deal. Just keep having fun, and the format's going to be yeah. Fine. I, don't, I don't think uh, I, I don't agree. think we could have put it better ourselves. But um, with all that, uh, Dave, thanks for joining us. Thank you guys. Uh, I had we a hope blast. to have you on for other videos in the future. Um. I'm here. This is great. Uh, this has been Tyler. And Andrew. And Dave. <laughs> and Dave. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, I'll be including links to all of um, Dave's information down in the con- or down in the uh, the description. Thank you. Descript- I, I was going to say bio, and I don't know why. <laughs> down in the description <laughs> below, I'll include you know your Twitter. I'll include. Uh, uh, if I can dig it up, I'll find that article about horsemanship. I'll link that down there. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, leave us a like, leave cool. us a comment, uh, shoot us up our way. We we could use more of them. <laughs> and uh, we will see you guys next time. Later. Bye. Have a nice day, dudes.